Welcome back everyone, today we're going to Wales, a country which I have many happy childhood memories in. Throughout all my visits though, I honestly had no idea there were so many creepy stories packed into Wales. It's a country steeped in history, mountains, castles and also an air of mystery. The perfect recipe for some creepy stories. My name is Danny Burke and this is the Top 10 Scary Welsh Urban Legends. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Grim Prophecy. In the village of Clanganu stands the Church of St Digane. There, in the churchyard, lies a yew tree that's said to be over 4,000 years old. Its life began around the time Stonehenge was completed. That's how old it is. Within its old and twisted trunks, locals say a supernatural being lives called Agglestore. According to legend, on Halloween every year, this being emerges to make grim prophecies to those who will hear it. In an ancient Welsh language, he slowly lists the names of the townsfolk who will die in the coming year. There's a cautionary tale of why people should never scoff at this list either. Years ago there was said to be a local tailor in the town called Sio Ap Robert. In the pub one night he told his friends that he thought the list was just nonsense and he poured scorn all over Agglestore. His friends challenged him to go to the tree and prove what he was saying. He slammed his empty glass down and marched to the tree where he heard a deep voice reciting the names of the soon to be dead. Then he heard his own. In a panic, he begged Agglestore to stop, telling him he wasn't ready to go yet. But sure enough, within a year, he was dead. Nowadays, many people believe that a person will find their name on the list if they don't take this story seriously. Moving on to number nine now, we have the Hanging Judge. Judge Jeffreys was a Welsh judge born in Wrexham who took charge of the Blood Assizes in the 17th century. The gruesome trials involved thousands of people suspected of treason, being burned alive at the stake, hanged, and beheaded. Some still say he has the blood of many innocent people on his hands and that these crimes have left him tied to this earth, unable to move on after his death. In recent times his story has been somewhat forgotten, but then in December 2014 a British ghost hunter called Ian Alderton shared this picture taken in the Ilchester Arms in London. Now He says it shows a ghoulish figure of Judge Jeffreys still wearing his old powdered wig and staring right at the camera. The Ilchester Arms were known to be one of the judge's favourite places to drink. The owner had allowed Ian to investigate the pub for ghosts after she kept hearing voices in her bedroom upstairs. Mrs Alderton said that she was so disturbed by the noises that at one point she hid under her covers when she heard an old fashioned male voice say, Oi. You, just like that, apparently. Let's hope she wasn't next in line for one of the judges' trials. Next up at number eight now, we have the Afank. In Welsh mythology, this lake monster was one of the most fearsome ever described. His depictions honestly do vary. Some say it looked like a giant crocodile, others a beaver, or even a dwarf-like creature. One thing they all seem to agree on, though, is that the Afank is a demon. The Afank was said to attack and devour anyone who crossed its path. There are many tales of individual encounters with the beast. One of the most notable was put forth by folklore writer Edward Williams. The legend says that many years ago a large Afank thrashed its body in a lake so much that it drowned all the people of Britain except for two of them who went on to be the descendants of everyone in Britain. I come from Britain myself so hearing this feels like a little bit of a close call. Moving on to number 7 now we have Kader Idris. It's one of Snowdonia's most picturesque mountains. In ancient times they say this was actually the throne of a mythical giant. The area is just covered in legend and history and myths. One story said that the lake by the mountain is actually bottomless and home to a Welsh water dragon that once terrorised the people who lived there. King Arthur himself is said to have been the one who banished it down to the bottomless waters, but not before dragging it up to the top of that mountain and throwing it in. Perhaps the most creepy legend to survive over the centuries is the belief that you should never sleep on the mountainside. Now they say if you do that, you will wake up as one of three things. either you'll go mad, you'll be a talented poet, or you'll never wake up again. I think even poets would uh, not really take the odds on that one. What a strange combination of choices. Moving on to number six now, we have the Scare House. That's S-K-E-R, not Scare. Anyway, the ghosts of Scare House are legendary in its corner of Wales. For 800 years, it's seen so much violence and bloodshed that locals believe every single inch of the place is haunted. One of the most famous stories revolves around a woman who lived there years ago called Elizabeth 
Williams. Now she planned to run away with her lover, a young carpenter and harpist called Thomas Evans, of whom her father did not approve. On the night of their big getaway, they hired a coach and horses to help them escape. When the coach arrived though, Williams dogs barked so furiously that they woke up the whole household. Evan panicked and ran away, leaving Elizabeth to face her father's wrath. He locked her up in a room with blocked up windows and forced her to marry someone else against her will. Eventually she died of a broken heart 9 years later. They say her spirit still haunts Scare House and is felt particularly strongly in the room she was kept prisoner in. In 2002 it said that a film crew tried to film there during restoration work. A high pitched noise emanated from the great hall and despite all efforts to trace the source none could be found. A medium told them they had disturbed something evil. Unable to work with all this noise they packed up and left as quickly as they could. Coming in at number 5 now we have Cantaguelod. That's the name of this legendary lost kingdom said to lie below the sea in Cardigan Bay. Story goes that the land was extremely fertile but depended on steep embankments to keep the sea at bay. The actual kingdom was lower than sea level. Special gates were periodically opened up to let the water in slowly for agricultural purposes. The king had left control of these gates to a local man who was always very trustworthy. One night though he had too much to drink and stumbled to his bed without closing the floodgate. When high tide came the water poured in. In just a few hours the entire kingdom was swallowed by the sea, taking the many thousands who lived there with it and the kingdom forever. Next up at number 4 now we have Devil's Bridge. Ceredigion is a Welsh county that's known as a hub of Welsh culture, attracting many tourists to its scenic towns, castles and beaches. However in the 11th century they say it attracted one visitor that nobody wants, the devil himself. The story goes that he went there after hearing about the stunning scenery and wanted to see it for himself. Down by the river he saw a woman whose cow was stranded on the other side of the water from her. He decided to help her but for a price. He told the woman that he'd build a bridge for her in exchange for the soul of the first living thing that crossed it. He thought that she would have to cross the bridge first. But when the bridge was built she threw a loaf of bread over the bridge and her dog chased it. He was so humiliated that he had been outsmarted he left that very moment, not even stopping to take the dog's soul. These days the townspeople say the devil has been too ashamed to ever return to Ceredigion since then, but his bridge still remains. Next up at number 3 now we have the traditional dress ghost. In January 2012 Paul Feehan took a trip to Abersoch in Wales. He and his friends took some film while resting on a bench by a lake area. It wasn't until they watched the video back that they saw something that didn't seem quite right. They discovered there had been a dark figure just standing there a few meters behind them the whole time. The figure barely moves during the whole video. This shocked Paul as he was absolutely certain there was nobody else around them at the time. After doing some research he was surprised to see the figure's appearance seemed to match up eerily well with that of a woman in Welsh traditional folk dress. As you can see from all these pictures if that really was a person they would have been very close, close enough for them to easily spot. This has led some people to believe that it is the long dead spirit of a Welsh woman still wearing the clothes from her long gone era. <laughs> Moving on to number 2 now we have Merlin's Oak. According to legend Merlin's Oak stood in the center of Carmarthen. That's Merlin as in the Merlin, the one and only, one of the most famous wizards of all time. Locals say that Merlin told them that Carmarthen would drown if this oak tree was ever removed from that spot. With this curse in place they say that a strange pointed notch appeared on the trunk of the tree that looks like the face of Merlin himself. For centuries the locals remembered Merlin's words. Then in the 1850s it was poisoned by a local who objected to people holding meetings beneath it, but its trunk was preserved with iron railings. Finally in the 1970s it was removed when someone set the tree on fire. Then Carmarthen suffered its worst floods in many years. Some say the legend held up and that Merlin fulfilled his promise to drown the place if his oak was ever removed. And finally number 1 now we have Hlandaf's ghost. Some ghost hunters travel long ways just to experience a single ghost. Well Hlandaf has not one, not two, three or four, but five famous ghost stories and they all date back to roughly the same 
era. The first is the story of a young boy who wore blue and drowned while playing on the banks of the river Taff. He is also said to be joined by the ghost of his mother, with onlookers reporting that they've seen a figure of a lady wading through the river late at night. They say she is forever looking for her son and trying to save him from the water. Another ghost is that of Bella, a woman who committed suicide in the area over a hundred years ago. She's regularly seen along the Taff Trail in the woods. The spirit of another suicide victim, this time a man, is also said to haunt the graveyard there. Now He has been known to give people a sharp poke on the ghost tour and follow them around as they are guided through the area. So guys, we have now done Wales, England, Scotland, Ireland, we've done Great Britain as a separate thing, we've done the British urban legends, I think we've done everything now apart from Northern Ireland. So that's pretty much that corner of the world done. Let's go somewhere completely different perhaps for our next one. Let me know. Thanks for watching as always guys. My name is Danny Burke and I will see you all in the next video.